So we have our uh, products of elementary matrices right here, and we're going to fill those in now. The order is super important, so we know matrices don't commute in general when you multiply. So I do need to line up E1 first. Let's see, E1, 1, 0, 0, 2, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1. E2 is in the top of the board, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, negative 1, 0, 1. And then E3 is in the upper left. Three is one zero 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 one zero zero negative two one. <clears throat> All right, we can multiply these in the regular way, go across, go down, or we can view these as row operations. So if we view them as row operations, remember row operations, <clears throat> the matrix here, if you think of this as just any matrix A, if there's an elementary matrix next to it, on the left, it performs its row operation like that. One of the ways to remember this, as opposed to the other way around, so just think of E as almost like a function acting on a matrix like this. So its left multiplication acts very much like a function. So I will go ahead and apply that row operation there to the matrix on the right. So I am explicitly associating like this right here. So I'm multiplying the two on the right first. What row operation does our matrix correspond to? You should be able to tell just from looking. So it's take row one and then uh, multiply by negative one, add to row three. So I'm reading it right off the matrix here. I could go up and see where it came from, but with an elementary matrix, you should be able to look at it and know exactly what row operation. It may take a couple seconds, but okay. All of your uh, add a multiple of one row to another row will have the identity, or the ones down the diagonal, and there'll be a non one or a non zero somewhere off the diagonal. All right, so all we gotta do is subtract uh, row one from row three on the matrix on the right. So first two rows unchanged, and last row, we're going to subtract row one. So that gives us a negative one, and then negative two one stay the same. And now I'm going to copy down the left matrix. One, zero, zero, two, one, zero, 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 one. Any questions on shortcutting multiplication by doing the row operation? So I want you to look at the matrix on the left, determine the row operation that it represents, and then perform that row operation. I probably should write the row operation next to the matrix that's going to have that row operation. So that's our row operation. Add two row one to row two, and our result one zero zero two one zero negative one negative two one. Okay. So questions on that right there. This is our lower triangle matrix L. So we should have our factorization completed now. We have an L. We got the U way earlier. Our U is what our row operations yielded. Not the row operations themselves, but what the result of the operations were on our original matrix. That's U. And then our row operations correspond to L. And let's go ahead and write out our matrix A equals LU. So our matrix A was something Two one three, four negative one three, negative two five five, <clears throat> and that should have been L U. Let's say L U. So L was one zero zero two one zero negative one negative two one, 
and the matrix U. Let's see, two one. 2, 1, 3, 0, negative 3, negative 3, 0, 0, 2. How could I check? Well, first of all, we have a lower and an upper triangle matrix. That should be pretty obvious just from the way they're written down. Zeros in the upper right of the first, zeros in the lower left of the second. So we got the right. Uh, there, it is a lower and an upper triangle matrix. I could multiply them out, and we should get the matrix A. So we've done enough matrix multiplication, so I'm going to skip the checking step. You got extra time on your midterm, and uh, you check. If all you have is one minute left, you multiply, and you figure out, uh-oh, it's not right. If you just write down, I checked, it's incorrect, but I don't have time to fix it, I usually give you one point for realizing your answer's wrong before I do. So I usually give you a bonus point for knowing your answer is wrong even if you don't have time to go back and uh, fix it. <clears throat> That's in addition to the partial credit you would have gotten for doing the sum row operations correctly or whatever the steps you did, you would get one additional point if you tell me your answer is wrong. So we'll do one more example and this time I want you to turn the matrix into uh, an LU factorization. Zero, zero, 006, 1, 2, 3, 2, 1, 4. So what do we have to do first when we find this factorization? What's that? Say that again? Yep, exactly right. So we got a zero out right there. So it's the same. You're not all the way reducing with raw operations, but you're reducing to a lower uh, or an upper triangle matrix. So zero out the bottom part of column one and two. And make sure you clearly write your row operations because you're going to have to go back and reconstruct the inverse operations in the reverse order. So make sure your notation is readable. You're going to come back and go back through it. you do all the steps here. So once you're done with your row operations and you have your triangle matrix, you need to reverse <laughs> the order of the row operations and reverse, you have to invert each one. And then get your product of elementary matrices.
Trying to make a balloon animal. <laughs> How do you like it? That's how it is. <laughs> it's deformed a little bit. Can you save that? Can I save? If I can tie it, I'll save it. <laughs> Excuse me. Right, raise your hand if you need help. You're doing real operations. <laughs> yeah, so I got to here. Okay, I got to this right here. Okay. So you did three real operations to get there, right? Yeah. So that you're going to go in reverse order. So you want to write the elementary major C that corresponds to the opposite real operation. So, gotcha. So write like, uh, so this would just be one, zero, zero, and then negative two, one, zero, 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 one. Yeah, oh, except that'll be a plus because you want to do the, oh, the opposite. opposite. Okay, so, yep. so that will be, uh, let me scroll back up so I can see. I don't know if I called that E1 or E3. <coughs> that would be E3. That's the last operation you perform, so it's the first one you're going to in the reverse order. Okay, so E3. Yeah. And your, your previous row operation will be E2. But how do you write that as a... So oh, take so your identity, oh, okay. and okay. the good news is a swap is its own inverse. So, so instead of one zero zero, it would be zero one zero, and then one zero zero. Yeah. Like Swaps are nice because they are their own inverse. Gotcha. And then E one would just be swap. Okay, so right here. And then that gives you U, uh, doing the E1 times E2 times E2. Yeah, so uh, I always get messed up on what's the lower and that's the upper. The upper is your result of your row operations, and then L will be the product of those elementary matrices. Just remember, they always, this is the. This is the E1 times E2 times E3. Yeah, that's E1, E2. 
E N. And your U was that initial. The U is a result of your real operations. Oh, just the lower triangle. Yeah, I got you. Oh, okay. Yeah, it'll be an upper triangle, but yeah. <coughs> I get messed up on lower and upper triangle. Like which one's which? Because it's it's describing where the non-zeros are, oh, okay. as so opposed to where triangle. the zeros are. Oh, okay. so gotcha. It's kind so of annoying. Just where we got zeros in the bottom left is which one's So this is our U. So remember, you don't have to go all the way to row reduce. In fact, if you do go all the way, you will go directly by the upper triangle matrix, and you'll have a different <coughs> factorization. So you actually have to stop. I could get ones here, but that would involve using fractions on the to turn the negative 3 into 1 and multiply by negative a third. I could do that, but then I'm going to have fractions over here. So I'm just going to leave it as soon as I get my zeros in the bottom left. This is U right here. So hopefully you got a similar. Anybody a different U? It's OK if you got a different U. I could multiply again any of the rows by a non-zero number. And I would still have an upper triangle matrix. So this LU factorization um, is unique only up to what you get here in the diagonal. I did three operations, so I'm just going to label a little E2, E3, E2, E1. That's the reverse order that I performed them. There's not always three operations. That's just coincidence on the last two problems. We only needed three. And remember, we get all these uh, elementary matrices by performing the row operation on the identity. So I take a three by three identity, and I'm swapping. The good news is your swap. How do you undo a swap? Swap a second time. So swap is the easiest one because it's its own inverse. So all the swap is is change the last two rows. We have one zero 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 one zero one zero. So that's E three right there. So your E3 is the first thing you did in your, so when you did your row operations, is your E3 <coughs> the first thing you did or the last thing you did in your row operations? E th this would be the last thing I did right okay, here. E3 is the last, okay. So here's another way to think about it. If we're starting with U, what is the first, and I want to turn it back into A, I want to multiply it by some things and turn it back into A, what's the first thing I multiply uh, it by? E E3. Okay. So I'm going backwards. So I want to multiply my matrix U, which is here on the board, multiply U by E3 first, then E2, then E1. So we're starting with the matrix U and working backwards. That's why we have to go in reverse. So I'm going to perform the opposite E2 row operation. So I'm looking at the top middle of the board. I subtract 2 row 1. The opposite is add 2 row 1 to row 3. So our E2 matrix will be last row 2, 0, 1. So any questions on our E2? E1 matrix? All I'm doing is swapping row 1 and 2 on the identity. So for E1, I'm just going to write out the matrix. <clears throat> so I'm swapping row 1 and 2. So here's the identity with the row swap on row 1 and row 2. And we can write out our L. L represents this E1, E2, E3 that I just put in a box. That right there is L.
So I have all my matrices lined up. I'm going to multiply, but I'm going to multiply in the wrong order this time. I'm going to associate, not incorrectly, but I'm going to associate in a way that's going to take a little longer. So I can, again, I have an elementary matrix on the left acting on a matrix on the right. So I just perform that operation, which is a row swap on one and two. So I'm going to row swap one and two, and that'll give me 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 0, 2, 0, 1. Now I have a problem. Is the matrix on the left an elementary matrix? Nope. So I can't just perform a row operation instead of multiplication. It's no longer an elementary matrix. So what I have to do now is multiply. I can't just do the shortcut row operation instead of the product. So I have to actually do the product now if I multiplied those two first. Uh, good news is I think this will be a fast product. So we're going to cross down. It's a bunch of ones and zeros with only a single two. So I got zero plus zero plus zero, zero. We'll go to the uh, second column, first row, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0. Now I'm on row 2, so that'll be 1, 0, 0. Row 2, column 2, 0, 0, 0. And column 3, 0, 0, 0. Now I'm in bottom row, column 1, 2 plus 0 is 2. Zero, zero, 001 and 200. Zero, zero. All right, so there is our final matrix, and that is L. Uh oh, we got a problem. What's the problem? It's not a lower matrix. So we got a problem. Maybe I can't add. Let's. Go back through. Uh oh. Uh, real quick. So we did it like that and had our one for our U. And when we plug it back in, or our one in our L, and it like works. Oh, it does work? Yeah. And why? It doesn't have to. Like we got that same L. We got the 0, zero 1, 1, zero, zero, 2, one, zero, Multiplied by our U, and we still got our original A. So is it only the U that has to be. Uh, I guess that That's a good question. So one of our row operations, so I believe it came from our first move right there. That's the one that screwed it up. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Okay. Some row operations commute, some don't. Okay. Like if, you're, if you have a larger matrix, like let's say you have a four uh, row matrix, if you swap like row one and row two, and then separately row three and four, those don't affect each other. Mm -hmm. uh, so those operations would commute. Uh, or if, let's say I added row one to row two, mm -hmm. and then I swapped row one and two, that those would be a very different if I did them in different orders. Okay. So, you do, you, so you do some some elementary matrices will commute if those row operations commuted. Okay. So, like in this, and it's like it all depends on what's going on, okay. um, and there could be like a triple swap may commute in some weird way that you didn't expect. Uh, so you can't always just do like e two times e three and then e one times that, or will that always? Work? Like your, uh, do you work inside out? Like your right. E's. <laughs> so if you do like E2 times E3 and then multiply by E1, which is what I did. Well, multiply so one by. So remember, you can associate either way. So if I associated this way, I should get the same answer, okay. the same product. But commuting is very different. Oh, gotcha. And associating. Okay. Gotcha. They may feel similar, but 
Uh, like I didn't know. You're multiplying different things first as opposed to different orders. Like I said, if you wanted to get three. Okay, I get it. Which is why if you if you group up like the way this is grouped, you can do one elementary operation and then a second one and then never actually multiply properly. All right, so I don't have the answer as to why this is not a lower triangle matrix, but we'll leave that uh, for later on next week. <laughs>